What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the newest version of the human generator add-on for Blender that just came out. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I guess just as a starter note, note that this is currently on sale as a part of the Blender Market Summer Sale. So if you do see this in the next week or so, this might be a good time to go check that out. Still a great value if you see it after the sale's over, but it's worth going and checking out um, if you do see this in the next couple days. All right, so Human Generator is a tool we've talked about on the channel before, but basically it's a tool that does exactly what it sounds like. It helps you generate people models inside of Blender. And so it's got a ton of different tools for doing that, allowing you to do different variations of people, um, different kinds of skin, different hairstyles. Um, it's basically kind of like an all-in tool for creating people in Blender. But with this new version, they've now added some new additional features in here that make this tool even better. So first off, there is documentation for this tool, um, which I can link to in the notes down below that's gonna walk you through this. There's a release notes that's gonna talk about the new things contained inside of this new version, um, including improvements to the creation and finalization system, um, the age system, which is gonna allow you to add age to your characters, allowing you to create younger or older humans, and some other big changes as well. So I will link to this in the notes down below. There's also a trailer video on Oliver Post's website. Uh, I think it's this one right here. Um, it kind of walks you through everything that's contained inside of this new version. But let's go ahead and let's jump over into Blender and actually take a look at some of these new features. And so first off, when you first install Human Generator, this is gonna come with a Blender add-on file, which is just a zip file. And then it's gonna come with a couple different library packs that you need to install. And so in order to do that, what you're going to do is you're gonna find a folder for Human Generator to install those content packs. And then down below, it's gonna give you the ability to select those packs to install. Now, one interesting thing that I would like to see in the future, I have no idea if anyone's working on this or not, but it would be cool if there were additional asset packs that you could purchase for Human Generator. At the moment, I don't think there's anything like that, but that would be something that I would like to see in the future. But for right now, what you wanna do once you've selected these content packs is you just need to click on the button to install all content packs, and that's going to install them to that folder on your computer. Now note that this may take a while because it's like two and a half gigabytes worth of stuff. So um, you're just gonna have to be impa you're just gonna have to be patient while it installs those files. All right, so once you've got this created, you can see how those different asset packs are going to show up in here. And so let's take a look at how we can add a human. And so what you wanna do is you wanna tap the N key on your keyboard and there's a little pop out that shows up right here showing you how to create a human. And so there's a couple different options in here. There's the individual human generator, the batch generator. Remember that can create multiple humans. You can create custom content and note that if you click on things like this content pack guide, that's going to pop up this window right here in the documentation is gonna show you exactly how to use that. So you can use this in order to generate your own content packs in here as well. But um, for now, let's go ahead and let's click over here and click on the option for get started. And so the cool thing about this is he's actually got this set up where it pops up a little window right here that's going to show you how to create a human. So it actually shows you how to do this directly inside of Blender, which is actually a really nice feature. And so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna exit this tutorial and I want to click on this button right here. Now notice when I click on this button, what this is going to do is this is going to give me access to all of these different template humans. The, the template humans is one of the things that's been um, that's been expanded in this new version. So he's given us a lot more like base humans that we can use in order to generate people. There's more variation in here for different people um, that we can start with. And so notice how there's different categories in here for people from different locations. And you can use this to kind of sort through those. But let's go ahead and let's add a character. So we're just gonna come in here and let's add um, maybe this John character right here. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on the option for generate new human. And so when you do that, what that's gonna do is that's going to pop up a new character just like this. And so notice how when it does this, this is generating a character and you've got options in here to make a bunch of adjustments. So notice how this does kind of hide the hair when you're working on these characters um, in order to make the whole thing work a little bit quicker, but you can toggle that on at any point. But now what we've got, 
right here is we've got the ability to adjust the character's like body composition. And so one of the cool things about this that I didn't realize until just now is notice how if you come in here and you adjust the person's body composition in here, right? So you can set if they're muscular, if they're not muscular, other things like that using these sliders. And what it's doing is it's automatically coming in here and it's adjusting this character. It's automatically hiding the clothes of the character so you can see those different things. But you can also click on the randomize button in order to randomize those things about the character. Now you do have options down below to adjust more individual things in here, right? So like quads or forearm muscles, other things like that. So you can actually come in here and you can make those adjustments on this character. So um, you also have the ability to change like the back muscles. Um, so a lot of different sliders in here. The sliders are actually really easy to use. Um, that I don't think is something that was in the previous version. So that's a nice addition. And so I'm not 100% sure what this stylized is supposed to do. I think it makes the person a little bit more stylized, almost like an animated character or something like that. Notice how the head stays pretty big, but other things get smaller in here. Um, so if you are trying to get a little bit more of like a cartoony look or something like that, I think you can use the stylized for that. But it doesn't like hugely affect how far you can make this person go um, from a slider standpoint. And so you can also adjust some other things about the character down below. I don't wanna get like way into these, but you can adjust like the neck length, um, the neck thickness, other things like that of your characters as well. But you've got the body sliders in here. And then if you scroll to the right, you've also got some of your other options in here. So like skin, hair, outfit, other things like that. So um, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the age slider because that's a new slider that they've added in here. What this is going to do is this is going to give you the ability to take your character and make them look older, right? And you can take them from 20 all the way to 70. And so notice how when you take them up to 70, what this is going to do is this is going to make the skin look a lot more wrinkled and um, aged. So you can use this in order to adjust that. Now let's talk of the hair back on for a second. And so you do also have an option down below. Let's say I wanted to make this character look like they're 55, but you can also come in here and you can add like salt and pepper or gray to the character's hair like this. And then you can adjust some of these things individually as well. So things like the amount of wrinkles that the character has. Notice how the slider is going to give you some kind of like fine control over this. You can use this in order to um, adjust some of the individual things as well. Note that that also makes changes to the body, right? So notice how as I scroll, as I make this character older or younger, it's adjusting the body composition in here as well. And so we've also got a ton of sliders in here for adjusting the character's face. So first off, we've got the option here to randomize. So notice how when I randomize things, it's totally changing like the skull composition of this person, basically the entire head and face, um, basically the entire head and face makeup is being adjusted in here. Now, um, some of these can give you a little bit weird results, but um, generally speaking, they all look pretty good. But then if you wanted to adjust things like the eye location, right? So like the eye depth in the skull, the eye height, other things like that, you've got complete control over those things using these sliders. And so down below, you do have the option if you want to do more of like a stylized character or something like that, you can also adjust like the scale of the eyes up or down. So you can make some changes in there as well. Um, so that's probably only if you're creating like aliens or something like that. Now, I have not really tested to see if you could create like straight up aliens in this tool. Um, I do think you could probably make some changes to the skin and other things things like that to get you close um, if you wanted to do that. But then you also have the ability to make some changes um, and add some variation to these settings in here as well. So you might just want to come in here and kind of like play with those variations. Notice how it gives you the ability to adjust things like the nose and the face um, and it gives you kind of a different look in here. So you can use this in order to quickly make adjustments to your character's actual face. But one of the things you can do under the skin setup of the female humans is you can also add makeup in here. So you've got the ability to actually add those with these different sliders as well. So you can add things like eyeshadow, you can add lipstick, other things like that. And you can adjust the colors of these in here using these sliders 
as well. So depending on what you're trying to do, um, this, this actually gives you a lot of different possibilities for different kinds of makeup and other things like that. Yeah, so you don't have the ability to do that with the with the uh, male characters. With the male characters in the skin, you've got this option for the beard, shadow, and facial hair instead. And so you've also got options in here for different hair types as well um, under hair. So if I scroll in here and say I wanted to pick a different hair type, and say you can scroll up and down um, with these different hair types, but you can add kind of whatever you're looking for there. But you can come in here and just click on these in order to apply different hairstyles to your model really quickly. And then there are also adjustments you can make to this. Like notice how you can make the hair longer or shorter. You can set like kind of how much it fades, um, how much gray you have in it, other things like that. So you've got the ability to do that as well as adjusting the facial hair, right? So if you wanted a different mustache, for example, you could use this in order to add that. You can adjust the beard. You can adjust uh, all the different facial hair on these characters. All right, and then we've got a separate female character in here. I just wanted to show you the hair on this one as well. So same thing where you can come in here and you can just really quickly um, adjust the hair that's contained in here. Um, so you can see how you can make changes to those. You can adjust what kind of hair is included in here. And then you can scroll down and adjust the different parts and pieces of the hair like this. So you can adjust like the base pieces to make it look uh, more more um, thick or thin, depending on what you're trying to do, other things like that. So you can come in here and you can make those changes. And then you can also change the color if you decide that you want to adjust the color in here. You can also adjust the roots and the redness of the roots, other things like that. I did want to show you just really quick, um, if you jump over into rendered mode, notice how these characters can actually look really good when they're lit properly inside a blender. So um, this setup process really gets us a um, good looking result um, once we kind of set up our lighting over in cycles. And so you do still have access to different clothing types for the characters. If you go in here to clothing, you can select a character, click on this option, and then uh, pick a clothing type. So um, you can pick those and adjust between them really easily. And so there are options in here for different clothes for the different characters. And you can just come in here and you can just select them with the character selected like this. Um, and you can make these changes. I would say out of everything that's contained in this tool, the clothing library is probably the weakest part. I mean, it's not bad, right? It gives you access to um, lots of different things, right? You've got like this kind of like relaxed look. You've got the golf day. You've, you've got all of these different things that kind of like fit. And you can come in here and you can adjust things like the color of what your character's wearing, other things like that. Um, I would say there's not a ton of variety, but I think you should be able to make just about anything that you're looking for, unless you're trying to get like super in depth, at which point you're probably looking at uh, trying to use a more advanced tool for that anyway. Um, but there are options in here, both for clothes as well as for footwear. You can and come in here, select a model, right? So we'll select this character and notice how that's gonna kind of like randomize the shoes that you have in here. So you don't have like a ton of option in here for options in here for shoes, but you do have some different options. Um, I don't know that you can change the color of the shoes, but we do have multiple different options for um, adjusting and changing the clothes of characters in this tool. And so note that you can also add different expressions to these characters if you go to the next setting right here. So you can add different facial expressions. These are all kind of preset in here, right? So you can see all of these. You can also click on the face rig and you can add a facial rig in here, which is going to allow you to actually like adjust things about the face and the character, right? So if I go into pose mode, right here, and I move these around. Notice how I can adjust like where the character is looking, other things like that. Now, I will say this is not something that I have done a ton with. There's a setting in here or a tool where you can do facial animations using the AR kit. I have not played around with that, so um, I'm not 100% sure how that works, but that looks to be a really cool feature. And then one of the other new features over here is I've duplicated this character, but if you go over into the processing settings right here, you can select characters and you can use the um, LOD or the levels of detail in order to lower the level of detail that's in here. And so note that when you do this, um, what it's gonna do is a lot of the features like adjusting the character aren't gonna work anymore, but you can use this to process. And then once you do that, 
and we'll jump over into wireframe mode just to take a look at this. Notice what that did is that came in here and that decimated the character mesh and it reduced the amount of geometry that's in here. So you can use that in order to quickly make that adjustment. Just know that coming back in here and selecting this character and trying to make some of those changes isn't really going to work the way that you want it to anymore. So just make sure that you set your characters up the way that you want them to be before you use the LOD function. And so there's a number of other features that you can see in the release trailer that have to do with like uh, with texture baking and the batch generator. Those characters are now editable as well um, in a lot better way. And you can also save custom things about different characters, other things like that. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the new version of Human Generator. For me, what I really like about it is it makes character creation feel accessible. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about this add-on? I'll link to it on this page as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.